makes a champion pool from like three to 15 player champions if you're like a mid laner or something. Yeah. But the fact that we kind of have double the teams now that are playing, those individual champion pools will have more variance overall. Mm -hmm. And that's when we're going to get to see the support Gragas's <laughs> or the mid lane Pantheons. And of course, the mid lane Kale, not as uh, uncommon anymore, but that is, of course, the picks that the pick that we got through here for Zeke. So, on to the rift we go. STO in the red, I guess, matching the color of tomatoes. I can't resound on that one. Pulse up in the blue. We're going to see where they go. Right now, they're really just kind of spreading out. Two, actually, uh, the one thing I want to point out, though, is uh, STO mm. starting with two red trinkets. That is actually fairly uncommon. It is really uncommon, actually. I think when the trinket system first came out, we'd see most people going with, like, one on the jungler. And then most junglers just got sad because the red trinket couldn't clear anything early game. And Kobe actually made this point yesterday that the early game trinket wards don't last that long. So it's actually not that important to be able to sweep them away early. And you should instead try and time your way between the wards that get placed down. Mm -hmm. But obviously STO is going to be looking to sweep something with the double trinkets. Yeah, the one thing that I see, though, is that's what happened right there, where Gragas put down an early, like, real ward. Mm -hmm. I would I would want to trigger on the team just to make my opponents feel sad for buying real wards. You'd be like, because they're really obvious when they go to ward, because, like, one guy has them in the inventory. You can you can count their inventory, and you're like, your 75 gold is gone. That'd be, like, the one time I'd take it if I knew a team opened Maybe wards. I think that could absolutely work. And here with Kuja, he has the sweeper because he has a whole bunch of wards already and he doesn't need an extra one. I am a little sad, though, that he hasn't went with a more offensive or beefy opening because obviously support Gragas uh, is very tanky by nature but he's not augmenting that with any itemization. We look at the Leona on the other side knowing that there's a Dorn shield that all in at level 2 might not actually play in the favor of Kuja because he's went with completely consumable items in the yeah. start of the game and the Dorn shield will actually help Leona keep up with him. He's gonna like rely on biscuits to not die for a while there. Yeah I'm gonna see how that goes off. Kiki's Looks like he's soloed his own blue buff there. And here we go, the standard two on two. So as well, yeah, you've got uh, the, the lane, actually, Pulse came to the lane first as well. So even if I have everything else, they're going to get level two first. I was hoping for some Gragas fighting. Nope, he's going to be crying into his pool. You know, we're going to give him some time to come around. Uh, the fact that they have the Xin Zhao jungle as well, all mm. about early ganking. And I'm wondering when he's going to make his rotation down into the bottom lane. Uh, because he hasn't necessarily started even in a, a place where he can gank bottom lane early. Knowing that Xin Zhao started blue buff, ge that generally means his first gank is going to cycle into the top or the mid lane. They didn't decide to offset it in the other direction. Well, then I want to see if he makes something happen out of the, the top lane here. Because we looked at the Xin Zhao from, um, I want to say it was Rakat when they were fighting Gambit. Um, yeah. If I have that one right. Or maybe it was Super Hot Career, I forget. But it was a Sin Zhao making a whole freaking bunch of early game plays, and it yeah. really snowballed the game, but they just couldn't hold it up against Gambit. Um, I want to see here if STO can make that same early game move with a clearly early game gank focused jungler, and he is looking top. Yeah, right now, I mean, they're trying to s stop Renekton from being such a bully early on in the game. Knowing that he's got a slice up, though, he just used it, they would have to go fairly soon, and he's actually playing smartly right here. Well, he went down to the river to put a ward down, but he's back in the lane. He's basically gankable by the Sinja, but the bottom lane at the same time. Kikis is here, and the jump is in onto Gragas, but the dive's there onto Renekton, and goodbye, First Blood. Even burn his ignite and flash. That is goodbye to Renekton. Well played, STO. Yeah, they really baited that one in there. They waited for the slice and dice to be out, and they came out at just the right time. You can see the Xin Zhao flashed afterwards, so even though Renekton flashed, he still got the three talent strike knock up. And hell, that's first blood for STO right there. It only cost him three summoner spells for two, so there we go. Sin Zhao making his first move. Glad I got to read that one properly. Feel good about myself. Pulse, though, unfortunately, Kikis didn't get much out of his gank as well. Gragas got out of that one. Kuja did have to flash away, and there's some continued aggression on him, but he's a very hard guy to actually do harass on. Plus, he's got all the innate sustain from his spell spamming. Spork Gragas is actually having a pretty good showing here, eating a gank and now on the aggression. And there we go, Body Slam onto Willite. Look at the damage output there, but the Flame Chomper's gonna stop the pushback in. Ignite also burned. Willite down, but still has barrier. Kuja's still uh -oh. in the battle, and here comes Kikis as well. Prothana's gonna have a hard time right there. Does dodge the E, but Kikis, ooh, the flash on the Q. Nice escapes there. That was close, though. Those were some really nice escapes. I feel like if Kikis could have gotten that lease in Q, it would have been a guaranteed kill. But the fact that STO kind of just split up side to side and neither one of them got caught in Lee Sin. 
was impressive. They are getting camped here, though, and I really wonder if they're going to be playing passively enough. This could be a very good counter kick, though. Oh, this is going to be fun. There are summoners on this Jinx, though. The counter attack might be hard to kill. When Jinx <laughs> dies before she can flash or barrier, goodbye the damage output. And now, Gragas, will you continue to man mode up? Kick has dropped down to half HP. They're not going to keep diving, but STO making the early moves. I feel like there was so much damage on Jinx, it kind of surprised him. He didn't use his barrier. Yeah. As he meant, like, <laughs> maybe he probably would have been dead either way, but the he exploded much faster than I was expecting. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Good well, uh, I got to give a lot of props to STO, man. Their jungler's making things happen 100%. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I just got to say, that was really, really well played. Yeah, so two good ganks from Xin Zhao so far, mm -hmm. uh, which... Also translates into two unsuccessful ganks for Kikis' Lee Sin. And that might have a fairly large impact. I, I can't actually make a call on that yet, knowing that Pulse doesn't want to fall too far behind because there's that kind of dis-synergy I mentioned yeah. in their team composition. But as long as Nidalee is actually strong, the dis-synergy wouldn't matter. Like, one strong Nidalee can win a game by herself if she snowballs it. That's true. Well, she's holding up so far. Actually, I have an interesting question on this, because, like, mm -hmm. STO are, like, not really, but they're kind of like four bruisers. Like, I realize Greg is going to be supporty and, like, not really have a big bunch of tank stats and, like, Kale's the same way, but, like, it's a bunch of guys who can, like, take a javelin and keep walking forwards. And I feel like that, mm -hmm. that hurts the, the chance here of Nidalee a bit. You know, I think you're absolutely right on that one. I think that as if Nidalee doesn't get extremely far ahead, or if it uh, actually takes too long for Nidalee to get her items, and people on STO tank up, it's going to be a bit of a problem. Kale, on the other hand, is even though she feels like she's a bit of a bruiser, the spear hurts her just as much. Because you true. don't see people building defensive items on her. Yeah, that's true. That's fair. Okay. One thing I like, actually, is uh, Kuja's had a pink ward in his own bottom lane, like his side bottom lane brush, like the entire time. And it's never got a timeout. And ST like has to keep this lane pushed or they lose that ward. Mm -hmm. But they've, they've kept it so far. They've kept that brush secure and pink warded. It's actually really impressive that they've been able to hold that. Because Lee Sin, with all of his visits down there, just think there was never a point in time where Leona felt safe going into that brush and killing the pink ward. It's allowing them um, a fair bit of brush control. If they could only get up even farther and get another pink ward down in the forward brush, they'd have even more dominance. But you know, this, this lane is working out pretty well. I like the fact he's built a health crystal already. So look how much health he's got. He's got about 1,200 health already at yeah. level 5. Uh, no one on the other side is even off thousand. Not at all. The zap hits a little bit, but Kuja, of course, has 10% damage reduction thanks to that W. And it's just this dominant lane right here. They grab the, the early Lucian. They grab the oddball support pick. And look how defensive now Pulse has to play in this bottom lane. They have to give up minions. They have to wait around and hope they get near their turrets so they don't take too much harass. It's support Gragas, win in lane. Just saying. Hey, one kill. That is one more kill than the other bottom lane has. Yeah. It has to be working. But and in all seriousness, us. it is working out fairly well. But yeah. because... Uh, Ka hmm. Kaglaro. Kaglaro? Yeah. You're a master at names. Kaglaro yeah. did give them the support on that uh, gank attack. That's fair. Oh. All right. So Sinjao may be most of the reason that this is working. But don't worry about it. Gragas gets all the credit. That's how it works. Uh, Buff's just getting traded around right now by these uh, these junglers. Nothing... Two major happening. The mid laners got blue buffs. Actually, yeah, mid laners would have got blue buffs by now. Um, and it's really back to sort of the laning phase here. Only 800 gold game. So pretty close here on both sides mm -hmm. here. Uh, no dragon attempts either, and no really major turret pushes. So uh, we've slowed down until we see another jungle gank, maybe. Yeah, a lot of that had to do with the fact that we had conventional straight up lanes. Mm -hmm. um, Renekton in the top lane, though, has actually not done anything to create an early advantage over Olaf because Xin Zhao has had so much presence. This is really going to help STO as this lane moves farther and farther because if Olaf gets ahead of Renekton, Renekton has a really hard time becoming involved in any facet of the game. And, and Gob is sitting here, I think he's maxing Reckless Swing actually, and just trying to chunk the health bar uh, lower and lower on Jokies just to make some kind of like dive even easier actually as you go through on this one. Um, and you're seeing like the lane is, he's not even like freezing it for, for Xin Zhao. Xin Zhao pulled into the brush right here, but like it's not the same bait like last time where it's clearly going to shove into his turret. Yeah, this is one of those things where he's actually hoping that Lee Sin ganks, and it's going to end up wasting his time, I think. There's not a very likely chance that Renekton would just decide to get aggressive all of a sudden without backup.
Yeah, so nothing at all. These guys basically... I think we're just going to start counting how long it takes for Sin Jao to realize nothing's happening right here. He started recalling twice. This is his second recall attempt right here. Finally, the lane unfreezes. It took oh, this long. Go. Yeah, and at this point, they're pretty certain that either Lee Sin isn't there or that they could just win a 2v2 because Gob and Kiglara are just so much healthier overall that even if a full health Lee Sin came in, uh, they would be absolutely okay. Even the items. It's just two Doran's items. The slow does land on a joke. He's forced the flash, and they're just going to go. No, they're not. Okay, no knockup, but it does force the flash out of this one. But uh, Kikis has been spending his time bottom lane, and Pulse finally got control of the bottom lane as well. Oh, I take that back. Okay, never mind. Nothing happened. They get control of the ward. They also have control over Dragon here. And that ward's finally going to go down, mainly because I think Kuja was unable to get Wu Light back with his ultimate. But Kikis has just spent so much time in this bottom lane. Uh, the support Gragas just, I think for its novelty, has changed the way Pulse has decided to play this game. I guess you got to realize there's a very interesting initiation from that as well. Like, you're right that you're not used to, like, what can a Gragas barrel do to me bottom lane all the time. Mm -hmm. It's certainly not going to be as bursty as before. You're not going to have, like, the no. double kill from a QR, but... Yeah. yeah very it, small amounts of damage, because I... Uh, when, when we get back to Kujo, we can check what his skill order actually is, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's not maxing barrels at all, and if he's actually maxing... Nah, he's maxing barrels. Yeah, one in W, one in E, but you're right, like... I've so seen it done in multiple ways. I've yeah. seen people put multiple points into W just so they can auto-attack and kind of, like, headbutt people a little harder. And you sort of talked as well about how Jinx is going to have a hard time against Leona because she excels at locking people down. Well, Gragas excels at making immobile targets go into their team and then lock them up afterwards. So it, it all actually kind of works in a similar way, for what that's worth. Uh, I still don't know how Common's going to stay in competitive, but... Uh, <laughs> so, okay, here we go. It's competitive right now, Freak. It is. They're winning the game. That's true. In, in further competitive games, outside okay. of STO. I, I, um, I accept. Okay, okay. Uh, here we go. So, the guys are chilling in their lanes. Most of these lanes actually staying very equal in minions. You mentioned before, Needly uh, was going to be a big factor here for Pulse. Kikis, again, bottom lane. Gee, holy... He, he just, is just spending so much time right in this matchup. They're actually sending a fourth person down right now with Needle. There we go, the pressure is on Kuja getting stunned up. The dive is there, can Kuja get out? Ulti, oh. and it's gonna dodge the rocket as uh, well. Ignite won't kill, neither will the Javelin, and Wulite, look how low, getting cold. Uh, that's a missed flash as well. So goodbye to one right there, the chase. Oh my god, that Javelin for Athana's down to 300 health. But who actually died? Nobody died for STO. They were able to turn that around. Miraculously, Kuja got away from that fight after everything was dumped on him. And then because they spent so long trying to kill that monster, Gragas, just take a look at this. He eats all Leona's spells, gets stunned, least in Q to the face, but then close dodges. He gets, that was kicked while he queued away because it wasn't enough to finish. Everything else was happening, Nidalee couldn't finish off. The teleport came in from Zeke's, and that's really the big turn there. Wu Light was way overcommitted for the kill. Nidalee could never make it around because she felt unsafe going through when Kale was there, mm -hmm. and just meant the support never arrived for Pulse. So that teleport counter gang, kind of nice, and in fact, it even manifested a couple of extra minion kills uh, for Zeke's. Like, he's not really trying to kill his lane opponent, but he's certainly trying to turn the other lanes around. And, and like, I'm thinking about that, I like it because you've got Sin Zhao constantly ganking, you've got Gragas setting up plays, and then Kale can just show up whenever she wants. It's a little strange, and it's good for them that it actually paid off right now. Uh, I think they paid a cost for it earlier on in the game because Kale was laning against Nidalee with no ignite, meaning there's not a realistic situation where he can go aggressive on Nidalee, mm. and it does allow Nid to free farm a little bit. It's very good that they're able to get the teleport turnaround there. Yes, that was pretty big. It gave a kill away to the AD carry, though. Prathana is going to have that one because of that kill counter gank. And here we go back into the game. STO now a little bit farther on their gold lead. It was 800 before. Now it's about 1,400. So these kills are growing them farther and farther ahead. Mm -hmm. Minions still some pretty good parity here. But there's Kuja finding Wulite. Oh, does not knock his opponent the correct direction. But the engage is still Ooh. coming on. Look at the burst again on Agragas. Can he survive this one? Nope, that's going to be a kill. Can Lucian chase down though? Flashes. Oh, oh are you kidding? The health potion keeping her alive. 34 health right there. Prothana now getting locked up by Elendrix, and there comes 760. Prothana, goodbye. Eagerly picking that one up. STO's luck kind of ran out right there. Pulse pulled that one off. They just kept going in again and again, and I believe Kuja hadn't itemized much of his tankiness before that fight. I could be wrong on that one, and just wasn't able to retaliate. I think 
definitely knocking him in the wrong direction, Jinx, yeah. at the start of it, is what sealed it. Yeah, no way to counterattack back onto the AD carry. Good stuff here by Pulse. Turn that one around, and they're going to start up on the Dragon now. So, two to three. Gold, only 400 apart. Pulse very much still in this game, despite the amazing early aggression. But SCO not happy to let this one stand. Kaglaro's going yeah. in on this one. Gets the knockup onto Elendrix. The fight's going to go on. No Javelin will land, though. And Elendrix is in on this fight. And look how low Sin Zhao has gotten. Forced to run away. Kuja in this battle as well. Drop dangerously low as well. NIQ picks up one. Picks up two. That's four to three on the kill score. And now Zeke's in a really bad spot. Forced ulti himself. But very late into this battle. Trades flashes with Leona. Two for zero, still control over Dragon. Mm -hmm. And SGO came in one after another instead of as a cohesive unit there, which is why they were getting picked off again and again. And this might be Pulse trying to turn around this game. I did talk about Needly, and if she gets a little bit ahead, getting the three kills right now, right after Athene's on Holy Grail, could be some really big things for Pulse. They might start setting up some sieges fairly quickly here. And this is a pretty good setup now, now that uh, NIQ does have some of that gold. You can see 6,100 gold on him, barely 5,000 on the second, third, and fourth place players in this game overall. So he's got 1,000 gold lead on anybody else. And there we go, the Needly is ahead. We want to see how this pans out. We've still seen this top lane just kind of sit here. Uh, 700 gold lead for the Olaf, who's already got a completed Sunfire Cape, and 1,000 gold in his pockets as well. So Gob, feeling pretty good on this matchup, I gotta say. Yeah. He has benefited greatly from the Xin Zhao ganks. It's going to be a matter of whether Gob can transition that into the rest of the game. When they start getting poked, will he have the ability to just run through pretty much on his own yeah. and go finish off Jinx while Nidalee tries to cut around? It's going, to be, it's going to be a tall task for him. Yeah, and it's going to be kind of on the team as well. Uh, I remember DeFisher talked about this with Alliance's game, where uh, Wicked was very far ahead, when the rest of the team wasn't, and they didn't capitalize on that. So STO yeah. will have to actually consciously use Gob here as well. Uh, we've got the Sinjao looking down for the bottom lane gank. Lee Sin actually uh, on Pulse that held top while we're necked in back and got his own Sunfire. I'm trying to see if these guys do any major moves again, because now we've got Dragon dead again. This guy's away yeah. around. Well, let's figure out what these teams are trying to do. Uh, as the game moves forward, mm -hmm. because I think I got Pulse figured out. It's mainly just the Nidalee poke with the Jinx poke, and if then STO wants to try and engage, they have a lockdown and a very strong counter engage. So they're basically poking and daring a team to go, or if they get enough poke, they can then get a hard engage. Mm -hmm. Got to get here. Okay, here we go. Zeke's trying to run away. Loves land the Q. This is not good for Kale. Pops the ulti. Does uh, manage to predict the kick, but it's not going to be enough. NIQ picks that one up now on a rampage four and zero. Ooh, and even bottom Kuja just trying to come in and help. Look at that burst. One more shot to go. Willite gets that kill, but we have a beautiful Gragas ultimate. Willite trying to run away. The body slam lands, but here comes the oh dear. The flash forced out. Still the engage coming through. Needly coming to the side as well. Will it be enough? Sin Zhao then a half HP. Jinx still firing in. And Lee Sin tanking up some of the turret shots. That's another kill picked up. Kaglau is gonna go down as well. Every single kill keeps going to Needly. 6-0 here. Pulse turning it on. Wow, and this is just just completely turned itself around. It was three kills to zero for STO yeah. in this game. And now it is actually eight kills to three in the favor of Pulse. Everything going their way. And that I think that's that's what their plan is gonna be from here on out. They're winning the lanes now. So it is actually on STO the emphasis to initiate. I think Pulse is in fantastic spot. Yeah, Pulse seemed to add that P to STO. Oh, go for it. We got a replay going on here. There's the engage, just Profana. Just the lockdown is so immense, just burst them mm -hmm. out right away. And this actually happened because STO was trying to bait an initiation from Pulse. They just got a little bit ahead of themselves and actually underestimated the burst potential of Leona and Jinx together. That's how this whole situation turns out. You see the cleanup from the rest of this one. It's good turret dodging and uh, tower aggro juggling as well. NIQ gets out with one shot to go on him. Lee Sin Shield even came by at the end there. It seems like Pulse just added the P to STO because everything's kind of stopped for them now. Mm -hmm. Gob just, you know, he's the only guy doing well now. Like, the lane's got set up for success. He's the only one who's carried it through right now. Everything else has been turned around. And here's some of the strange things. So, Xin Zhao does not transition into late game at all. He is one of the worst scaling champions in the game. Mm -hmm. His early ganks are fantastic, but then the fact that you need to get, like, damage and also tankiness, but he also scales off attack speed. You just cannot, those items that synergize all those things don't exist. Mm -hmm. uh, so he is struggling. However, Kale 
is one of the most powerful late game champions in the game. The, when the game gets extremely late. So STO is kind of caught between two types of game plans right now where Xin Zhao is feeling a need to kind of take over the game a little bit, whereas Kale with the teleport has just been a passing laning phase the whole game, and the combination of those two is not working out. Yeah, we've really only seen that one teleport gank anyway, so uh, not turning around much anymore. I think they really could have used the kill maybe in that last fight to make something happen a bit better. Of course, that didn't happen here just yet. So, Nidalee, of course, has turned on 6-0. Actually, that was just a Javelin just striking down Kale to 1 HP, and it's going to give them the mid lane turret here for Pulse. Of course, top lane was answered back, but you're right. Pulse looking really good right here. 4,500 gold also putting them ahead. Yeah, and this is the siege that they want to pull off right now. They're going to mm -hmm. try and poke with as many Nidalee Spears as possible. STO's seen this coming from a mile away, though, and they're trying to initiate from the back. They have a bit of a numbers advantage, I feel, as well. There comes the rest of them. Nope, good fight at Kiglaro. Gob, first ult and run away. Is Kuja going to get caught a little bit here, actually? Half HP. There's the jump in. Caleb's going to keep him alive for a little bit longer, but that's still Kuja going down two for nothing. That flank did not work. That was the saddest flank I have seen in quite some time. Pulse was all over top of them. Elendix on his Leona locked them down before they got there. And it ended up just being Olaf trying to run to safety. And they lost the turret anyway. Yeah, they took it down. So Pulse, they got a couple of they got a couple of kills under their belts. 20 minutes turned around and sort of the Pulse is quickened. They've just jumped on and have been starting fights a lot more, kind of forcing their way a lot more. It seems like these guys have a much better handle on all right, we're ready to go. We're ready to start making moves. They're, they're, they're kind of on the button for closing games out, it seems. Right now. Let's see yeah. if they can close this out, though. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the game yesterday with Cloud9 and EU. They won, like, every lane. They took about 5,000 dragons. Yeah. <laughs> and then they just they took six turrets as well. Yep. And then just didn't know what to do with it. We might be in a similar situation fairly shortly for Pulse here. They're up three turrets to one. They've gotten 10 kills in a row, but what do they do? Let's see this dragon fight. No, STO right there with complete control over this side. It's not going to get stolen away by Kikis. He will jump over the wall, so no big cost to Lee Sin. Just nothing gained. STO gets some of the gold back, but still, uh, despite having a bunch of dragons, they're, they're very much behind here. Mm -hmm. 5k gold, still a very painful amount of gold. 760, the strongest member of Pulse by a wide margin, has a completed death cap. And he's going back for a little bit more. I think he did. He is going back to base. Yeah, the recall's completely yeah, right gonna there. He's going to be working on his Void Staff yeah. next. And even though we mentioned a uh, fairly tanky lineup from STO earlier, it's not there yet. No. They do not have magic resist in enough places. Xin Zhao in particular is actually going to be another squishy target who, if he takes Spears, is going to be hitting down. And when it's just Gragas and Olaf that are like the good guys for taking Spears, and the other three are squishy, it's not enough. Nidalee will poke them down. Yeah, absolutely. There's barely any healing whatsoever. A rank 2 Kale heal. That's pretty much all these guys got right there. And of course, she's still working on her second big item. I always like kind of comparing the lanes. I mean, you know, like Kale's supposed to kind of win her lane early on. Nidalee kind of scrapes things together. But Nid's like halfway to her Void Staff, already has Athene's Death Cap. And uh, Kale's like waiting to complete Lich Bane here. So, yeah, it's uh, not a comparison. No. Right now. And sure. Kale got a kill by teleporting down, but going up against a barrier in Italy without even an ignite means you were just allowing 760 to farm mm -hmm. on Italy entirely. Yeah, and you don't want that to happen. You need to punish that lane at Probably least somewhat. Not. I mean, especially mm -hmm. when you've got a Xin And pre-6 for yeah. Italy as well. You, you need to try and aggress Italy a little bit pre-6 if you're someone who can match her as a ranged attacker, which Kale absolutely can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all these lanes were like supposed to be dominant lanes, and, and Kaglaro had his his choice of lane to kill, and just never went mid, unfortunately. Blue buff stolen away there by Pulse. That's another thing that's going to hurt Sto, uh, right here. Uh, and yeah, the the lanes now all getting pushed up. Looks like Pulse doing a good job of kind of going everywhere, making sure that all the lanes are going the correct direction, and then starting the siege again. I want to see where they go next. They've had time to recall and shot back up. Pulse looks for the bottom lane here. Mm -hmm. Well, they've taken down one of the middle tier turrets in the middle. Uh, now they're actually going bot lane. And I actually do feel like with the inhibitor changes to the game where it's just the one lane that has super minions coming through, I think this lane is the most important lane to actually get the inhibitor down in first because it puts the most barren pressure on the enemy team. That was a lot of damage. That was a lot of damage. That hurt a little bit. He nearly one shot Rathana. Safe to say Nidalee is in that place right now. Yes. Where she 
first. Kind of wins the game for you. Yep. Let's see if they can do it. All right, here we go. Bottom lane, 25 minutes in, 10 to 3, 7,000 gold, a whole bunch of numbers, meaning, yes, Pulse are winning this game right there. A little bit of poke on Akuja. Doesn't matter too much just yet. Lee Sin Q, not the same as Needle Q. Bit difference there. Slightly less potent. Slightly. I'd have to but say. one lets you jump forward and kick them backwards, which is also cool. And we have to remember that these are very important games for these teams. Oh, yeah. It's a best of one right now to see if they get to move on to the next round. Huge mm -hmm. stuff. Huge, absolutely. Uh, and, yeah, top eight becomes best of threes. Start getting challenger points. That is the system where you actually qualify for the promo tournament. You might be seeing the winner of this team in 10 weeks' time playing for a spot in the LCS. This is, this is how they get there. Yeah, but the good news is there's actually kind of two challenger series for every LCS split, so they have multiple chances to get in throughout. Yeah, even if you lose here, you go back to rank 5's ladder. They just reset today, actually. So if you want to be here, ladders reset, go play rank 5's. We'll see you in about five weeks if you make it. And it's important to note that most of these teams are qualified. They all made it through rank 5. Yes. Right? So finally, I've been wanting rank 5 to have this competitive edge <laughs> like matter, for yeah. like three years because it used to be that very high rated rank 5s, people were saying, well, why don't you just scrim? And I was like, because I, I just want a ladder. I just want to queue up, yeah. get a random five people I'm against, and just go and play. And this Challenger League really encourages these teams to do so. And these are the champions of rank 5s, and that's why we see them. And it's, and it's fun to see, like, the ease of putting them together is so much easier as well. Like, putting a scrim together, finding a team that's worth scrimming, like, that's all kind of difficult as well. It's like, hey, CLG, you want to play us random five people? And they're like, why do we care? Um, but here it's like, well, they're all going to try really hard. They're all going to put teams together. Like, we've seen some very successful teams of just really good solo queue players saying, let's just run for it. Like, just make a team and play, no opportunity cost. And we're seeing teams try this out right here. I like it a lot. Yeah, so it's Pulse that is now just putting a lot of pressure on the top lane. STO's getting something back, but it's just indefensible turrets, I think. It's yeah. generally a smart turret for Kale to take that down because they weren't going to be able to defend the outer turret. Yeah, so good pick up there, at least by STO, but of course Pulse, there is those magical six turrets, the ones that you tend to get by just trying kind of hard as the winning team. So here, here's the test. Okay, so Javelin's hurt. That might be all it takes What's for them the test? to pass the test. Oh, uh, <laughs> can you get in past this? Can you get it's past true. the six turrets? This is the final wall of defense, and it is only a 7,000 gold lead, and Kale does have the Lich Bane, which is an incredibly potent item for her. Renekton is yet to have a big impact, but he does have kind of the key items that he would like to have. Mm -hmm. Sunfire and Visage, yeah, he's pretty happy. They, uh, they want to take the test later. Yeah, okay, they're going to they're gonna get it later. They're going to wait for finals. It's just yeah. midterm. They decided they're just going to wait. Uh, no biggie here. Looks like they're grouping back towards mid, and and I do want to point out, Pulse have yeah. taken control over the topside jungle. There's a yeah. whole lot of blue wards over there, so they see the route around Baron. Um, they see that whole sort of area. Dragging up in eight seconds, that's pretty much free for these guys. I don't see it being contested, so mm -hmm. uh, Pulse at least is doing some, like, bookkeeping. Yes. And then they'll be like, alright, we'll try again when we have a little bit more gold. And so the average level on their team is around 13 or 14, so Dragon is close to its max amount of gold. Um, one thing that has changed in the Dragon with the 2014 season, I know most of you guys have probably gotten used to it at this point, but uh, the Dragon's level actually scales throughout the game based on the average level in the game. And it taps at level 15, starts scaling up at level 6. And when Dragon is at its max level, it gives 260 gold a person. Yeah. Which, if you really start like thinking about, um, is two to three kills. Which yeah. I would say it's a rather important objective. And knowing that Pulse is already ahead, as long as they're keeping studious bookkeeping timers on that thing, mm -hmm. uh, they're getting kills for that. Yeah, and, and think about it as well. That's 40 less gold per person than Baron. Yeah, like, exactly. I mean, you think taking Baron's a big gold swing. Like, Dragon's basically there come late game. Um, the other mechanic I like mentioning as well with this one, since we're waiting for, for the pressure to start back up, is it gives bonus XP if you're lower level than Dragon. If you're there around Dragon and it dies, it'll give you a bunch more experience. Mm -hmm. So, like, again, if STO takes it, for example, they'll catch up in levels pretty frequently. So uh, you'll hear us talk about uh, trying to keep it off the table as a counterattack or a comeback mechanism as well. So Olaf did have to use his ultimate right there. I wonder if yep. Pulse is going to try and pull something aggressive off this. I think uh, a more experienced team or an LCS team would try and push something uh, almost immediately. The fear, though, is that they... Here, that, that, what just, I saw the Gragas, and I was like, they can't do Baron because there's a Gragas <laughs> on the other team. <laughs> the same thought. But they can do Baron because that Gragas doesn't do any damage. It's Mikhail's Crucible Gragas. Uh -huh. He'll heal you, which doesn't help you steal Baron, but for what it's worth... 
Uh, there we go. Baron yeah. is being started. Giant Nidalee Javelins helping that one as well. I like the attacks be given to Jinx as well. They're in a, a really combo. dangerous spot right here. Here comes the jump in. Willet's going to be under fire, but does have Flash. Jumps over the wall, but now it's kind of isolated against Baron right here. STO is taking control of that side of the map. The uh, culling comes across. Only helps deal damage to Baron, though. And a Javelin is Prothana. Pulse, don't get anything from this. Yeah, I think that was a sloppy Baron by Pulse, but they're going to try and kind of salvage that uh, afterwards. The fact that Jinx and Nidalee... Oh! Okay. That worked. Salvage operation, mm -hmm. kind of starting. The fourth death comes down for Xin Zhao, and they're going to try the repeat, knowing, knowing there is no smite that can stop them. This time, though, notice how everyone on Pulse comes around the Baron pit, so they don't have to do that awkward over and back in the walls. And look what just happened as well. STO basically given this up. Kale ran bottom lane, the Lucian's over by Wolves as well. No contest whatsoever. Pulse, nice Baron picked up, 11 of 3. These guys are looking pretty good now. Yeah, they might actually pull us into a push right away. You can see, even though they have a lot of gold, 1,700 even on Leona and 1,000 on pretty much everyone else. They're going to go straight up the mid lane because they saw Kale bottom, they want to get her out of there, and they think they can make something happen on this push. we got about five seconds. The turret is going to go down. None of the javelins land just yet. But inhibitor completely there as Baron Buff giving him the control. Pulse taking this one now. 11 to 3 and kills mid lane turret and inhib are gone. They got a Baron buff for three more minutes. So, they ate their Wheaties, they got the Baron, and they passed the test. Yes. That's that's a really big move for Pulse at this point. I just, I feel like Nidalee has made it to the point where she takes over the game. Just a couple of the Spears has yeah. all this really happened, because they haven't had real fights. That This is how, this is what happens when a Nidalee gets really far ahead in the game, is even though everyone else is there and kind of dissuading people from over committing and going all in, it is all about those javelins because they are literally taking 75% of someone's health from one hit. Yeah, you saw her kill the jungler from like half. Uh -huh. Like melee frontliner tank bro with an ancient golem and now a uh, giant spell as well. Uh, here we go. Okay, so bookkeeping by Pulse. They got the Baron buff. You said they had about 3,000 gold or 1,000 gold in their pockets apiece. Got another turret kill as well. And it's like, all right, let's, let's spend our money, get our items. We're going to start again in a bit. Uh, top lane's already pushing in with minions. Mid lane looks like uh, NIQ is going to go there. Kills minions pretty quickly. Good job. Javelin hit that one. Uh, but the rest of the team's looking for bottom lane now. Yep, the most important inhibitor, mm -hmm. as I like to call it. But they already have the middle inhibitor down. I think, really, Pulse has played everything but the early game here at a really high level. I think they've done most of their rotations proper. They haven't made mistakes other than that one little slow Baron, which ended up giving them Baron anyway. And they're really making STO pay for all of their mistakes. And here we go, the bottom lane siege now. The next sort of chapter in their book, if you will. They've got the mid inhibitor that's going to start spawning minions. Uh, top lane actually is pushing in towards them, but Pulse don't care too much about that one. Instead, they still look for this one. Now, the Banshees did get popped off of Jinx right there, so she is Gragasable, theoretically, if that's going to be STO's way in. It's probably the most likely one. Does go for the Body Slam. Doesn't land much after it. Does get a ah. Gragal, uh, Gragas Barrel there. Doesn't get much. The ulti comes across. That's Ooh. almost the kill. Forced to McHale's himself. And now Willet under a bit of damage. Oh, my God. Goodbye, Prothana. Javelin takes him down. And this is going to be a slaughter right there. Pulse comes in. Kuglaro goes down. Two for nothing so far. And the dive is still on. They're diving in towards Kale. She's not going to go down just yet. Actually, Zeke hasn't even popped his ulti at anyone yet. No. Who needs it at this point? He has just done very good work here. I mean, it's because you can't necessarily ulti a spear. That's what's been getting most of these kills. It doesn't quite work right there for Zeke's, and he gets caught on. Maybe we'll see an ultimate, but they're just losing by so much. They're knocking at the base. I think this is game. All right, Pulse going in. One turret going down. Still a five versus three. The second Nexus turret going down as well. This is surely going to be Pulse picking it up there into the round of eight, where they're going to start earning at least one challenger point, maybe more. If they can keep it going, it's an LCS spot if they can keep winning.